Beloved, you are listening to Grace Life Comey Podcast, a platform commissioned by God to raise men into completeness in Christ Jesus. We believe that you will be blessed beyond measure as you give yourself wholly to this divinely inspired teaching. Through God's servant Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. We give God thanks and praise for this last day of um, Discovery Summit 2022. It has been a journey of discoveries. And indeed, we appreciate the Lord for what He has done thus far. And the Bible says, on the last day, the great day of the feet of the feet, Jesus said, Come, come, come. This is the last day, the great day of the feet, the great day of the feast. And Jesus is saying to everyone, Come. Um, we've been learning so much in discovering something that we thank the Lord for what we have been learning. In fact, these lessons are very important to us, and um, um, I, I believe God that everyone who has been joining with us has been getting blessed. You can always go back and listen to the teachings, and there are many more teachings there for you to listen to. Grace Life Call Me, just Google Grace Life Call Me. I see loads of teachings to get blessed with, and on Facebook, there are a lot of teachings to get blessed. YouTube, there are a lot of Christian teachings to get blessed. All of Grace Life Call Me, praise Jesus forevermore. Let's say what a prayer I'm going to God's God today. We have quite a lot to say today. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you for another time in your presence. We give you praise and glory. We give you honor and thanks in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, um, Holy Spirit, we ask for revelation and insight today in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we glorify you, our Father, we extol you. Thank you for our life shall not remain the same today again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Yesterday we understood the enlightened note. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And we understood um, quite a lot about the enlightened. Um, we have been on a journey thus, but like I said, I want to go to reiterate many of the things you have said in the past. Um, just go and listen to them. Um, today we want to continue um, and ensure that um, we are able to do quite a lot. Um, by right, we're supposed to look at uh, um, three of the things the enlightened know, but in this meeting, we're just going to stay on one. Amen. Because that's what time will permit us to do. I thought we'd be able to go into the three, but you see, um, as we go in our studies and in our fellowship with the Holy Spirit, just keep discovering and discovering amen to Jesus. Amen. So we just have to walk through this. But we trust God in the next discovery so we are going to be going to the others. Amen to Jesus. All right. Um, having understood in um, pretty comprehensive, uh, having understood in a pretty comprehensive manner, amen to Jesus, what the enlightened um, entailed and what the enlightenment entailed, amen to Jesus. Um, um, we'll go further to know what the enlightened know. As we see in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. Amen to Jesus. Um, it says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what is and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who do believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which is wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. Alright, so um, we're going to be looking at um, there are three things that the enlightened know. Um, they are number one, the hope of his calling. Number two, the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Amen. And number three, the exceeding greatness of his power. I think um, um, inheritance, we did it in inheritance conference. Um, we did quite a good work in the inheritance conference. So you can go ahead and look for inheritance in inheritance conference in um, Grace Life for me and you see what our inheritance is in Christ. It was also a huh? yes. conference, yeah, sorry, Hess conference, and you get to see what our inheritance is in Christ. We studied quite a, a little on that, and with that study, you can at least get the foundation to build your own study. Amen to Jesus. So we're looking at the hope of his calling today. Um, the exceeding greatness of God's power. We're going to be doing subsequently, praise God forevermore. Now we're going to be looking at the hope of his calling. Now, um, the King James Version says that we may know what the hope of his calling is. Amen to Jesus. Um, the Bible in basic English says that we may have knowledge of what is the hope of his purpose. Have knowledge of what is the hope of his purpose. And the International Standard Version says that we may know the confidence that is produced by God having called you. 
payment decisions. I like these different, you know, <laughs> expositions, and they're all beautiful. You may know the confidence that is produced by God having called you, <laughs> amen, to Jesus. Now, there's a confidence that is produced by the calling of God. Um, um, the reason why most of the times we don't, Christians, we don't live in the fullness that God has given to us because we don't have this confidence that the calling of God produces. And we're talking about the calling here, we're, calling that, we're talking about the call of salvation, praise God forevermore. And once you leave the call, there's a confidence it produces in you, praise God forevermore. The confidence that you can call him our Father, the confidence that he can hear you when you pray, you know, and, and, it, and it goes on, praise God forevermore. We're going to be going st- straight into, you know, seeing a lot of this. Now, so what is the hope of his, of his calling? What's the hope of his calling? Now, we're looking at the word hope, amen, to Jesus, and we're looking at the word calling in the Greek, respectively, praise the Lord. Now, the word hope is the um, Greek word elpis, elpis, and um, Thea defines elpis as expectation of good. It also means, in the Christian sense, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. So, um, 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 the um, Strong's actually defines it as to anticipate with pleasure. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah. Alright, so we're looking at the um, expectation of good um, in the Christian sense joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. Amen. Alright, now what does calling mean? Um, in the, the Greek word for calling is klesis. Klesis. And klesis means a calling. It means calling to. It means an invitation to a feast. And it also means of divine invitation to embrace salvation of God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Alright, so Basically, what's the hope of his calling? The hope of his calling is number one, the expectation of good when one obeys God's call and invitation to embrace his salvation. So there's an expectation of good. Are you get what I'm saying? The hope of his calling is the expectation of good, not the expectation of bad. <laughs> Are you get what I'm saying? Now, uh, many of us feel that the, the, the uh, 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 when we answer the call of salvation, you know, it's it's, it's just a journey in, in bad things. Temptations are not bad; they are tests. Are you get what I'm saying? And if you are not ready to pass it in an examination, you are not ready to go to Jesus class. <laughs> are you getting me? Amen. So temptations are not bad; they are actually good. In fact, the the, the, the proof of study is examination. Are we together? When God allows temptations come your way because He wants to prove that you have studied. Second Timothy two eighteen says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God." We are going to not we did not to be ashamed of study. Rightly dividing the word of truth. How do you know you have studied? It's by the test. <laughs> Are you get what I'm saying? Temptation comes to show that you have studied the word of God. Are you getting me? When the devil came to test Jesus in the, in, in the wilderness, it was a test to show if actually he has studied the word of God. And we can see that all the replies he gave to, to the devil were from the Trinomy. The devil was coming to test if he if the word knew the word. Are you getting me? If the word knew himself. Are you getting me? And so he, he had to prove to the devil that come, I know myself. I, 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 are we together? Now, so the, the, um, the expectation, the, the, uh, when we when they answer the call of salvation, we have to expect good. That was every good and perfect gift coming from the Lord. We have to expect good. Praise the Lord forevermore. There's nothing bad in God. Everything in God is good. Are, are you getting me? Even negative circumstances always turn out for me. That's why I'm saying, I will know that no matter about anything, I will know, will know that all things work together for good to them who love God, who are called according to His word, purpose. All things work together for good. The end result of all the workings around is good. That's why we expect good. We don't expect bad. And you get what I'm saying? Praise God, River. All right. It's also the joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation when one obeys God's call and invitation to embrace his salvation. So the joyful and confident expectation of what? Eternal salvation. When one obeys God's call and invitation to embrace his word, salvation. All right, praise God forevermore. And um, it is the expectation of good and joyful and the joyful, confident expectation of eternal salvation when one obeys God's call, God's call and invitation to his what? To his feast. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. All right. Now, we're looking at three um, understandings of the hope of his calling here. Three understandings. Praise the Lord forevermore. Hallelujah. So let's look at the first one. That is the expectation of good when one obeys God's call and invitation to embrace his salvation. Now, what does this mean? The call of God is good. Are we together? 
The call of God is good. Praise God. The invitation of God is good. Um, the devil prevents people from answering this call because he knows that the moment they stand, they answer and good comes into their life. You know, it reminds me of the story I always tell about my parents. So there was this when my, my parents got born again. There was this um, um, this um, one of their friends then who they were trying preaching to and telling to get you know preaching to bring to him salvation and he wouldn't get born again. And some years later, he met them. Was in an airport where they didn't meet them, and um, he has been saved by them. And he asked my parents, "Wow, why didn't you tell me that this Jesus was that sweet?" Praise God forevermore. You know, as even it was now, he was blaming them for not telling him the Jesus. And they were like, How else can we tell you? It is all in the experience. Praise God forevermore. You cannot see the good in Jesus unless you experience him. Amen to Jesus. Now, so the call of God is good and it comes with all the good in God, which he gives with no limits to those who he is called. Are you getting it? The call of God is good and it comes with all the good in God. Which he gives with no limits to all those who what heed the call. There is no bad in God. The Bible says in God, um, Psalm says, there is no unrighteousness in the Lord. Are you get what I'm saying? There is no righteous or righteousness. There is no bad in God. No iota of bad. Everything about God is good and perfect. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Now this good is all there is. Um, in eternal and everlasting life. Which is what God gives to all who He is called. This good we are talking about here is all there is in eternal life, or also known as everlasting life, which God gives to everyone who does what who He is called. John three sixteen, popular verse of scripture. For God so loved the world that the world gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have what everlasting life. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. So what is the good that comes that God gives to those who, be, who receive his call of salvation? That good is called everlasting life. And everlasting life has goods in it. It has goodies in it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Everlasting life has so much goodies that cannot be explained. Amen to Jesus. Now this makes us understand that the good gift God gives to all who read his call of salvation is everlasting life. That's a good gift. Are you getting what I'm saying? I know somebody is going to be asking, going to be saying, come on, I'm going to be talking about, you know, um, the, 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 the good of marriage, good marriage, the good of good house. You see, the truth about this is that, uh, let me show you what they are. They are additions. They are not the main thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are, are you getting me? Just like when you get a job, in a job, you have what you call your salary and um, all the basics that are, ad- that are in the salary structure. Then you have what is called a fringe benefit. Is that not so? The free bed is just an addition. It's not the main thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Just an addition. Um, good how good wife, good family, good children, good job, good career. All the all the things that actually that the Christians are focusing on, they are actually the fringe benefits. They are not the main thing. The main thing is what eternal life, everlasting life. That's the main focus. And he said, one of the, the greatest uh, distractions that the devil has been able to stage for the church is for the, is enabling us to move our focus from everlasting life and focus on the fringe benefits of everlasting life. And you get what I'm saying? Moses asked the Lord to show him his glory. And God said, No one see my face and leaves. He said, Okay, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put my hand and cover your face. And I'll pass by it and I'll allow you to see my goodness, which is my backside. So actually the goodness of God that Moses that God showed to Moses was what? Was his backside. Are you getting what I'm saying? And the Bible says that goodness and mercy shall follow us. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, but Moses was asking for what? The glory. Are you getting what I'm saying? And in that glory is what actually is the eternal life. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the eternal life. The, the whole person is the front and the back. Is that not so? The front is the glory, the face is the glory, the back is the goodness. So eternal life, let me use the word, is the front. Are you get what I'm saying? Then these other things, these three benefits are just the back that come along, alongside. But the devil has successfully made us focus on the goodness on the backside instead of focus on everlasting life. That's why a lot of Christians are not eternity conscious. Are you get what I'm saying? We're not eternity conscious. But we are very time conscious. Amen to Jesus. 
Now, the, the, um, God's good is not things and possession. It is a kind of life which is greater than anything or possession. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yes. This good we're talking about here that comes by obeying God, by, cause, by answering God's call for salvation, it's not in possessions. It's not in things. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is the life that is greater than things and possessions. The Bible says a man's life does not consist of the abundance of his what? Possessions. Are you getting me? Praise God forevermore. That makes us understand that a man's life is bigger than possessions. I'm talking about a man's life now. I'm not talking about eternal life. I'm not talking about everlasting life. If a man's life is bigger than his possession, then what can you talk about everlasting life? You see? You can not even compare possessions to a man's life. Are you getting me? You can't compare possessions to a man's life. Then how do you now try to compare possession to everlasting life? And that's the, ch- that's the challenge we have in the church today. The church defines, the church defines a born again Christian by his possessions. Oh, the blessing of the Lord is defined by possession. And I always like to draw people's attention to something. Abraham had Sarah. Sarah. He had cattle. He had animals. He was rich. He was wealthy. Are you getting what I'm saying? He was wealthy, but he was not yet blessed. Genesis chapter 11, he was wealthy, but he was not yet blessed. He lived in Ur, a city that was an economic center. Him and his father, they were wealthy, but they were not yet blessed. In Genesis chapter 12, verse, uh, verse 1 to 3, he said, And the Lord told Abraham, Leave your father's house and I'll do what? And I will bless you. If he says I will bless you, what does that imply? It implies that he was not yet blessed. Are you getting what I'm saying? That makes us understand that possessions are not the blessing. The blessing is bigger than possession. Possessions cannot give you the blessing. But the blessing can give you possessions. So when the focus is on possession, you lose the blessing. Now on the average, when you ask yourself, who is a blessed man? Oh, come on, he has a good house, he has a good car. The, 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 the way we have limited the blessing to material things is so alarming. The blessing is bigger than possessions. Are we together? It's bigger than things. So if a man's life is bigger than things, what about everlasting life? Amen to Jesus. Now this life is the expectation before one answers God's call, an invitation of salvation, and it becomes now the confidence he or she has after he answers the call. Are you get what I'm saying? Everlasting life is the expectation. Before you, before you answer the call of salvation, your expectation is to have everlasting life. John 3, 16, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes, the expectation is that when you believe, you have what? Everlasting life. And you get what I'm saying? Now, when you now believe, it is no longer an expectation. It is now a manifestation. In other words, it is now your confidence. Praise the Lord forevermore. Now, so let's go. What is everlasting life? Uh, many of us have heard of everlasting life, but everlasting life. So let's look at everlasting life. What's everlasting life? Now, um, uh, uh, the, 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 the word everlasting is from the Greek word aiheus. Aiheus. And um, aiheus. And aiheus means, Thea defines it as without beginning and end. That which always has been and always will be. That which always has been and always will be. That means it has no beginning, it has no end. All right. It means never to cease. Never to what? Cease. Praise God forevermore. So now, everlasting life is life without beginning and end. It is that life which always has been and always will be. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's a life that was, is, and to come. Are you getting what I'm saying? And this life never ceases. It is never to cease. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Now this life is God's life. Because God is the one who was and is and is to come. And it's only his life that was and is and is to come. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was and is and is to come. It has no beginning and it has no end. That is everlasting life. Life that was before time. 
in time and after time. The life that created time and yet could not, was not created. The life that cannot be timed and the life that cannot be traced. Now, everlasting life cannot be traced. You know, on earth you can trace life. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can trace life. And the evolutionists are already, they are, they, they are very much confused. And finally, they, they are, even in their confusion, they are, they, are, they are accepting that there's something beyond, you understand what I'm saying? What they can understand. So we can all trace life to Genesis chapter 1. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's life on earth. But everlasting life can be traced to God. And God cannot be traced. So everlasting life, as it were, cannot be traced. Praise God forevermore. So the hope of God's calling is his life given to all who obey his call and embrace his salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's what the hope of God's calling is. His life that he gives to all who obey his call and embrace salvation. What a blessing. That means you now have a life. See, when you, when you obey the call of salvation from God, you now have a life without beginning and end. <laughs> Say, well, Pastor, how do you mean? That's what I mean. Say, but um, I was born by my mother. That is what, that is what time told you. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? But if we look at predestination, he, he, will, he did for noon. He did predestinate. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So we were, we were predestinated in the womb of God. The new creation was predestinated in the womb of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And same way Christ cannot be traced in eternity. He is only in God. The Bible says we are with Christ and Christ is in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? And when one is in God, you cannot trace the person's life. Are you getting what I'm saying? His timing of life. Same way we, our life, cannot be traced. That's what everlasting life is all about. A life that cannot be traced with time. A life that is God's own life. Everlasting life is being before time, being in time and after time. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You see, that's the blessed, that's the blessed, that's, <laughs> that's the hope of our calling. That we can live God's life. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. We can have God's life. That's the reason why we don't die. We transit from time to our real time. Our real time is eternity, which has no time. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So we don't die. We transit from time to our real time. Time, which is eternity. Eternity does not have time. So the time zone where we are meant to live, let me use the word time so we can explain. The zone where we are where we live is eternity. Mm -hmm. I get what I'm saying. Yes. But but because of the because of the purpose of redemption, we are in time. Though we are in time physically, but in our our spirit man still lives in the zone called eternity. So when we sleep, because we don't die, when we sleep. We transit from what? From time to our real zone. But you know what? We start enjoying what eternity has to offer, even in time. You see, when, when we understand this, we will not think from time point of view. We will always think from eternity point of view. We will live our life as eternal mind, eternity minded people, not time restricted people. You see, well, if Christians can really understand that this is the hope of our calling, the life of God given to us, all this um, chattering, jumping, shouting, all this noise, all this plenty drama we are doing, man, we will stop it. Are you get what I'm saying? All this seeker sensitivity will stop it. You know, when you understand that <laughs> these things are not your real life, are you get what I'm saying? This is not my real life. Are you get what I'm saying? Um, this house I'm living in is not my real life. Are you get what I'm saying? When I know that this is not my real life, I would begin to live in the consciousness of my real life. Yes. So most of the things that we seek for, we will stop seeking for them. Most of the things that we are crazy after, we will stop being crazy after them. Most of the things that are the, our attractions to God, we will stop using them as attractions. The devil can use silly bits on us because we don't understand what the hope of our calling is. The life that God gives is what he gave to you. That is the hope.
You see? Because God lives in eternity, needs are in time. Are you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Needs are in time. Uh, uh, whether I like it or not. Now, for example, if you have anything that you need now, um, give some time. You may know whether you actually need that or not. And if you actually need it, if you if you are living your life just the way you are meant to live your life, you don't need to struggle for it. It's okay. Are you getting me? Like somebody once says something in finance, you are told to save for things before you buy them. You want to, you want to buy a, 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 a phone, they advise you to save. The phone is a thousand dollars. They tell you to save for it. Why? Because when you finish suffering to save that thousand dollars, you would really ask yourself after saying, is there actually a phone I want to, <laughs> I want to use this thousand dollars to buy? Do I really need this phone? Okay. Can I not even go for something that can do the same purpose of a lesser price? Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Why? Because need is time um, uh, limited. And when you allow time to have its course on a need, you will know whether it is actually a need or not. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. But when you are living in eternity, you don't have what is called need. That's why God does not have the need for hunger. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting me? Even when you created man to uh, Lucifer to praise him, Lucifer messed up. He created man. Man, uh, when man messes up, he says, he, he told the, uh, Jesus told the, 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 the Pharisees and Christ, said, when they were stopping the train from praising, he said, ah, don't worry. If you stop them from praising me, I will do what? Raise stones to do what? Praise me. In other words, you can never put me into a point where I'm in need. In eternity, you can never put. In eternity, Need does not exist. Yes. So you cannot put God in a corner. One of the satanic strategies of doing business is to put somebody in a position of pressure where the person now becomes desperate and the person now has to start crying to you. You can only do that to a man who is living in time. Yes. They've tried it for us, time is that number. They try, I'm telling you, they've tried it for us. They've tried it. Now somebody did it right now. I'm just looking at you. I don't live in time, I live in eternity. That's why Philippians say, My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Where is his riches in glory? In eternity. It doesn't supply from time, it supplies from eternity. Yes. This life, eh, when you have it, you just you, you are just flying. You are flying. You are just moving. As the spirit is flowing you. Let me run away from here so I will not stay long on it. Are we together? Okay, the next one looking at is the joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation when one obeys God's call and invitation to embrace his salvation. Now we've understood that the call of God is good and it comes with all the good in God which he gives with no limits to all who would need his call. Are we together? This good is all there is in salvation which is what God gives to all who need his call. What does God give to all who need his call? Salvation. So are, you, are we together? You see, most of us, um, over the years, we don't understand salvation. Are you getting me? I once heard a preacher say that there are some preachers who are preaching all this salvation message. I asked the question, what are we to be preaching? And I asked that question, what are we to be preaching? If you follow our teachings online, you see that we are talking Jesus. We are talking salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because our challenge in the church is that we have misunderstood the gospel. And so it has derailed us into many frivolities. <laughs> Are you getting it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the church has become used to trends. But at the time, what was really was leadership. So everybody started preaching leadership. At the time, what was really was financial intelligence. Everybody started preaching financial intelligence. At the time, what was really was what they what they really they really know success, success, success principles. Everybody started teaching success principles. Fifty-two steps to success. Five hundred and twenty steps. At the time, what was really was relationship. So everybody would have to introduce relationship into their message. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. And now, what is raining? Uh, like we know, uh, as really does in the teaching. There is righteousness, grace, and even the righteousness and grace, many of us don't even understand what they are even teaching. We don't even understand what they are teaching us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God forevermore. We don't understand what eternal life is. We don't understand what salvation is. 
And that's why we are looking the way we are looking. And we are struggling the way we are struggling. Praise God forever. But I, I pray that Christians understand what eternal life is. And this is the hope of our calling. It was what we hoped for before we got saved. And it had become our confidence that now we are saved. How I wish we would, I pray that we understand what salvation means. And it was what we hoped for before we got saved. And this is our confidence that now that we are saved. See, just see, the revelation of salvation and eternal life is more than enough to take us through life. The revelation of salvation and everlasting life we give us all we need. But until we understand this revelation of everlasting life of salvation we will keep jumping here and there and not understanding the hope of our calling you see we must know it the proof of being enlightened is that we know what the hope of our calling i get what i'm saying you can't be say you're enlightened i don't know the hope of your calling no you get to know you have <laughs> it's a proof of enlightenment are we together now it's a proof of e- enlightenment we well, have just seen some things about everlasting life but in everlasting life there's no need <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. There's no need. At the everlasting time, you are not you are not limited by time. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, there is a revelation of the sons of God that the Lord is doing, where time will no longer be our limitation. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Where we don't need when I mean time will no longer be our limitation, it also includes the things that time abuses. For example, money. Are you getting me? That's the revelation that God wants to be releasing in these end times. Even money will not be our limitation. No, no, no. It won't be our limitation. Resources won't be our limitation. Because lim- limitations only exist in time. Limits only exist in time. In eternity, there are no limits. And God expects us to live from eternity point of view, not from time point of view. We are not trapped in time. We are, we, are, we are transiting through time. We are moving through time. We are pilgrims through time. And pilgrims are on a journey. They don't get trapped. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why Christians are trapped with different things is because we don't see ourselves as Christians. We see ourselves as people who have come to buy and sell. So life is a market to buy and sell. No, that is life. But the Christian life is not a market. The Christian life is a pilgrimage journey where we are continuously moving, revealing Christ. If you came to buy and sell, you'd be trapped in the market. Is that not so? At least for hours of market, for market hours every day. Some they do go Sunday to Sunday, morning till um, the 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m. You be trapped in market. <laughs> are you getting me? But we are not trapped in time. We are tr- we are moving through time, revealing Christ. That's why nothing can be beat us. Let me go into um, salvation. All right now. So um, now let's understand what brings salvation. What brings salvation? Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, For I'm not a Paul speaking, as if I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. What brings salvation? Simple, the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ. You see, let me, let, let's understand something. The Bible says there's no salvation any other place except in the Lord Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? Only the gospel of Christ can bring. Only where Christ is preached can people be saved. See, at, 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 here we thank God for the strategies we have in the church today. Tell them that God will bless them. Tell them that God will heal them. Tell them that God will... Those are good strategies. You get what I'm saying? But if the telling you are telling is not preaching Christ, is not revealing Christ, men will not be genuinely saved. That's the reason why people come to God because somebody told them that they will get breakthrough. They come to God because somebody told them that they will get a house. They come to God because many of them that they will get husband, they will get wife, they will get a uh, miracle job, they will get miracle business. And then when they stay for three months in church and they have not seen husband, they have not seen wife, they have not seen what they, they were promised, what happened? They go to where they can get it. Are you getting me? Yeah. Why? Because the, the, the gospel of Christ was not preached to them. The gospel of things were preached to them. The gospel of at the marketing of 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 a of Christianity was preached to them. The, the the marketing of man's desires was preached to them. And no matter how much you market Jesus, if he's not his gospel, people cannot be saved. 
That's the reason why we have people that come to Christ and some one, some months or some years after they've run out of Christ. Why? Because if you ask them, how did you get saved? They told me that God will do this for me. Are you get what I'm saying? God will do that for me. And he has not yet done it. So I have to put a little, I have to take a break and actually find out. Are you get what I'm saying? But anyone who the gospel of Christ was preached to him, are you get what I'm saying? Yes. It was a gospel kind of you 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 see such a one say for me to live is Christ and for me to die is gain. What we need today is the preaching of the gospel of Christ. That's what we need today. Especially in these times where the church has become a merchandising zone. You know, Jesus drove away the people who were selling in the temple then. He drove them then. Now they have increased now. The buying and selling is on the increase. Are you get what I'm saying? It's on the increase. And now, even Jesus, when he carries the whip, people will tell him, Ah, Jesus, you have to show love. We need to survive. We need to survive. Are you get what I'm saying? But salvation is only brought by the gospel of Christ, the good news of Christ, that Jesus came to save man from his sin. Salvation is being saved from sin. Not saved from the effect of sin. No, saved from sin. When you are saved from sin, no man will be saved from the effect. I cannot start preaching to you. If you want to destroy a tree, destroy the roots. If you are seeking to destroy the stem, then there's a problem. The stem will grow, a, the branch, sorry, the branch will grow again after cutting it off. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if you destroy the roots, you have destroyed it. When people preach the gospel most of the time, they preach they, they, they preach to deliver people from the branches of sin, not from the roots of sin. Poverty is a branch of sin. Sickness is a branch of sin. Death is a branch of sin. And when people market, when people market Jesus and say, if you need financial breakthrough, come. If you need um, um, business breakthrough, come. If you are sick and you need healing, come. They are only trying to preach, to, to, to deliver people from the branches of sin. Why the root of sin is still there? It is Jesus saves you from sin. When he saves you from sin, sickness will be out of the picture. I get what I'm saying? Poverty will be out of the picture. Death will be out of the picture. The gospel of Christ is what brings salvation. Now where is salvation? 2 Timothy 2 verse 10. Say, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Where is salvation? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's in Christ Jesus. There's no salvation anywhere other than in Christ. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? In Christ Jesus. In Christ. That's where salvation is. Salvation is not in a message. Are you get what I'm saying? If we say salvation message, no, it's not in a message. Salvation is not in any other thing. It's only in the person of Jesus. So when we introduce Jesus to people, we are introducing salvation to them. Our job is to introduce Jesus to them and allow them to enter into Jesus. When they enter in, then the work is done. And then we then keep nurturing them in Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are, are you getting me? We are not nurturing them in a group. We are nurturing them in Christ. Because that's where salvation is. That's how we keep revealing Christ to you. You have to know Jesus for yourself. Paul said it in Philippians 3 verse 10. I can always quote it that I may know him. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made what? Conformable unto his death. It's in Christ that is salvation. Are we together? Yes. Our See, as ministers of the gospel, our duty is to reveal Christ to people and pray them into Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. And when they enter into Christ, nurture them to remain in Christ. See, I'm not going to nurture you to remain in a group, in church, in a, you understand, in a denomination. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not going to nurture you to remain in a denomination. There is no salvation in any denomination. There is no salvation in any group. There is no salvation in any sex. There is only salvation in Christ. So my job is my job is to reveal Christ to you. That Jesus 
came and he died for your sin and my sin. Bosha, my job is to reveal Christ to you. And my job is to pray you into Christ. And once you come into Christ, my job is to nurture you in Christ. Now we have discipleship materials. When you go to Grace Life Home on, on our podcast, there are different channels. In fact, I was, I was looking up and I saw there are other <laughs> podcast channels that are coming up, taking our materials. And we don't even know are we together. You know, we thank God for that. Now there are a lot of discipleship materials there. There are a lot of teachings that if you soak in those teachings, they are going to close with 400 teachings now. If you soak in those teachings, my brothers, my sisters, if you just soak in those teachings for six months, ah, uh, what will come out of you is the manifestation of Christ. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Why? Because our job is to make sure you are in Christ. And this is the best way we can do it by revealing Christ more to you. My, to make sure you're in Christ is not by paying your house rent. It's not by giving you money to start business. Those are good things. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Lord empowered me to do it, I'll do them. But I only did it after I have done the first one. Like I always tell people, Jesus first taught the 5,000 before he gave them food to eat. I will first have to teach you before I give you food to eat. In fact, they were almost fainting. <laughs> he taught them till they were almost fainting. And I said, okay, let's give them food to eat. So that's the work to make sure you are in Christ. Jesus sent her teachings, teachings that will build you in Christ, teachings that will build the revelation of Jesus, teachings that will build, that, that will bring out the fruit of the Spirit in you. That's what, the, that's what we need now. Teachings that will make us reveal Christ more, that will keep us in Christ. Because in the times we are living in, I'm telling you, it's so easy to get out of Christ. So you won't even know where you have gotten out. Are you getting me? You will still be preaching. You will still be doing, doing all the drama you are out. You are working for another person unknown to you. You have become a useful agent, but you don't know. To the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Praise God for the moment. So, we must reside in Christ. Outside Christ, there is damnation. There is no salvation. You cannot say, I'm born again and I'm taking a leave out of Jesus. I always tell people, those that, uh, I always tell people who, want, uh, who, who stand on eternal security as an excuse to continue living in sin. I tell them, I don't understand what you're saying. You say, I've got to marry to a wife now. And they say, okay, I took how many years to court her in courtship and now I've married her. So since I've married her, finally I've got her. And then they say, okay, I'm leaving you, I'm going out of um, the country. No communication, nothing, 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 nothing. And you say, after I pay, I've married you, I've paid the price, I've done everything, I've done the wedding, everything proper, I've taken, I've paid to your family, I've married you, so I'm out. Are you still in the marriage? One year, two years, three years, four years, no communication, nothing. Are you still in the marriage? You have actually walked out of that marriage. And don't be surprised when you come back and you see that another man has married her. Don't be angry. Because you walked out of the marriage, and you get what I'm saying. So, eternal security is not an excuse to walk out of Christ after coming into Him. Because outside Him is damnation, inside Him is salvation. So, if we must enjoy salvation, which is the hope of our calling, we must remain in Him. Praise God forevermore. Now, what is salvation? I believe. Um, a lot of us want to look into this what salvation is. Alright. Salvation is from the Greek word soteria. Many of us would have heard of soteria. Soteria, soteria. And soteria, Tia defines soteria with beautiful meanings. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Now we are understanding that these are the things we must know. Are you getting me? If you are born again and you don't know this, even if you have attended foundation school, please, you have to go to this foundation school. Are you getting what I'm saying? <laughs> you have to know what is the hope of the calling, which is what eternal life, everlasting life. You have to know what everlasting life is. You have to know what salvation is. And then the other two things we have to deal with, you have to know them. Are you getting me? Because this is the hope of the calling. This is what's going to keep you confident, even in the face of death. Are you getting me? And this is what's going to keep you trusting the Lord, even in the face of challenges that you cannot explain. Amen. Amen. So, Thea defines soteria as number one deliverance, preservation, safety. Now, so um, we, I hear people who talk about deliverance ministry. I don't fight anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? But there's one thing I know that salvation means what? Deliverance. 
The Bible says he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Are you getting what I'm saying? That translation is actually deliverance. Psalm 107 verse 20 said he sent forth his word and he healed them and he delivered them from their destruction. Now, so the moment you get born again, the truth is that you have been delivered. But if you don't know, the devil can still use your ignorance against you to manipulate you. You see people who they are born again and they say they still need to go for deliverance. Yes, the problem is not um, the devil. The problem is ignorance. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because even if you go for that deliverance and you are still ignorant, that devil will go and look for seven on that stronger, more dangerous one and they will come back and your latter state will be worse than your former. The Bible says when the demon is coming out of a man, it hovers the desert. And then he says, okay, let me go check my former house. If there's still room for me. And then he goes and sees that the house is well garnished, cleaned up. What does he do? He says, and he, he goes and gets seven other de devils, more wicked than it. He says, and they come and inhabit the man. And he said, the man's latter state is worse than his former state. And this is the problem many Christians have. When you get born again, this is what happens. Let me explain to you. What happens is that when you get born again, you are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the of the soul. Now your house has been swept. It has been cleaned. It has been arranged. And you get know what I'm saying? But it needs to be what? Fully unpacked. Are you getting me? Just like a, your parlor, you clean it, it, it's well arranged. Are you getting what I'm saying? And you just leave the house for months. What's going to happen? Matter. There is, they say, even in matter, there's, there's no vacuum in life. Is that not so? There must be matter. So in the, in the presence of a vacuum, some things more habit. What will happen? Cockroaches will start habiting. Is that not so? They have to use your furniture for you. Um, um, rats, wall geckos, how they even get access to the house, we don't even know. I don't know how they get access. Put the house and I, they will find their way. Ants will come in. Spiders will come in. Because there is no vacuum in life. So when you get born again, what happens is that your house is not like a clean house. It's all clean, it's all new. Your furniture are clean, everything is new. The house has been well painted. Now, what you have to do is to ensure that the word of God inhabits the house. You have to start filling up yourself with the word of God. Why? Because you have been delivered already. Are you getting me? But if you don't fill yourself with the word of God, the devil is going to come check again. The rats, the cockroaches, the ants, the spiders, the war geckos, they will come check. And when they come check and say that, wow, this is cool, nobody is here, we can have a few days. What happens? They're going to make a mess of the furniture. So when you get born again, you have been delivered. The next thing is to do what? Is to fill your life with the word of God. To fill it up with the word of God. Just keep soaking in the word. Keep taking in the word. Keep the, he said, he said, well, Pastor, um, how do I do? Read, read, read. Keep studying, keep studying, keep studying. Keep memorizing. Just keep taking it in. Allow it going. Because your deliverance is maintained when the word inhabits your house. But when there is no word inhabiting your house, there is no vacuum in life. Cockroaches will inhabit. Demons, devils will come. Are you getting what I'm saying? So salvation is deliverance. So when you get saved, have you received Jesus? You know that person that says, have you confessed? They believe with your heart and confess your mouth. My brother, you have been delivered. The Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot hold it, cannot grasp it, comprehend it not. That light and darkness cannot cohabit. Same way, the, death, um, the, the Holy Spirit and, and demons cannot cohabit in you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. That's how you are born again, you are full of light. You are, you, are, you, are the, you are just the embodiment of the light of God. Because your spirit man is alive and you are full of light. And you get what I'm saying? So you cannot be possessed by the Holy Spirit and demons. The Holy Spirit is on one side, the demons are on that side. No. But you know what? Though you cannot be possessed by, um, by the Holy Spirit, you are either possessed by the Holy Spirit or possessed by demons. Now, if you are possessed by the Holy Spirit, the devil can try to find access to your mind with the soul, the lapses in the soul or the wounds in the soul. So what do you do? That's why the Bible says, renew. Be not conformed to this one, but be transformed by the word. Renewing of your mind. Are you getting me? Yes. With that, you maintain your deliverance. Deliverance is not touch and go. That's why we have a lot of confusion in the church. Hey, he is born again. And he says, still worry me. It's, if the person is not born again, the first step to deliverance is salvation. 
Once that is done, every that will take care of. I, I, I listened to um, Dr. David Ogwele, somebody who came to complain, long story short. He said he was trying to do the deliverance for the guy, trying to do the deliverance. He said, but he was seeing the, the, the creature, the demon spirit in the form of a creature moving from one part of the guy's body to another part. He said he was seeing, Lord opened his eyes to be saying, like, what is this? It was actually a crocodile moving. Ah, what is this? He was doing and doing the guy, we roll, we turn, we fall, and yet nothing. He said, now the Holy Spirit told him, hey, wait. Let this guy confess to Jesus as his own person as it is. If not, you waste all your time. So he stopped, he took a stop, stop. Young man, you need to confess the Lordship of Jesus. He said, okay. And he led him to confess the Lordship of Jesus. As he confessed the Lordship of Jesus, instantly he said, now you foul spirit, get out. Instantly! He foul spirit did what? Left. Why? Because what he was doing was an illegal operation. The foul spirit still had a legal ground in the man's life. Are you getting what I'm saying? And all he will do is to keep torturing you. Since he has a legal ground, when you say get out, it will move, it will change, it will change location. It will, it will change location. It will change location. Are you getting what I'm saying? It will change location. But once the, the, you, the, the person in question, it reminds me of when I was in secondary school, I was going to do deliverance for a girl. I can never forget that story. She told the thing is that moved to my leg. About how many of us we cry, we suffer? How many days deliverance? At the end, we don't know who to deliver to. It has moved to my leg, it has moved to my head. I was ignorant. We we're ignorant. I didn't understand that that's that 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 would be the way deliverance is done. Once the devil still has a legal ground, you, you cannot send him out. But the the occupant has to make the devil illegal. Are you getting what I'm saying? By confessing the lordship of Jesus. Once that is done, deliverance has effected. Even before you shall get out, the devil gets out. Praise God for more. And I think I don't know what I'm talking to you, but this is very, very important, especially for those who say they love to, you know, minister deliverance to people. That's why I don't, I don't waste time with with um, all those um, demon spirits that you know, come. Uh, do you want to accept just as another person as a God? Genuinely, yes, okay, you want to accept, you want to convert, you confess the Lordship. As you confess the Lordship, we don't need to talk too much again. Now that force is illegal, we send it out. Praise God forevermore. And it also means preservation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So salvation is preservation. You'll be preserved. When things are, when people are being destroyed, you'll be preserved. That's what salvation entails. When Egypt was being plagued, Goshen was what? Preserved. Why? That was a proof of salvation. That was a, a, a sorry, a, a, a shadow of salvation. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was a shadow of salvation. And that's what happens to us. And it's safety. 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 On the way, on the land, in the sea, safety. When you are saved, you are safe. Both spiritually, physically, and all around. Are we together? Yes. And it also means deliverance from the molestations of enemy. Enemy molestation, they are troubling your dream, they are beating your dream. It is because they know that you don't know what salvation means. Are you get what I'm saying? If they know what they know that you know what salvation is, they you will beat them in the dream. It reminds me of the story one of my pastors told me of a particular lady that she gets pregnant six months into her pregnancy. She sees a bull just stand and looks at her in the dream and runs with his head and hits her stomach and she wakes up and blood is flowing out. She miscarriages. It happened for a period of years. And then one day a neighbor took her to church. And when they took her to church, one day after service, as we were going home, the pastor called her by the corner. She and the neighbor were going home. The pastor called her by the corner with excusing the neighbor. I said, sister, you are pregnant again. The six months is better than for me. She now, okay, start praying this prayer. Rock of ages, come down and destroy my enemies. She kept praying the prayer. Says, exactly the six months again, she saw that dream. The bull stood again and put his position on his head for her again and looked at her. And the bull started running. As the bull was running in the dream. You see, you pray a prayer to the enter your dream world. She shouted, Rock of ages, come down and destroy my enemy. She said, as she command, as she made that declaration, as the bull was running with top speed, a rock fell from heaven, a big rock in between her and the bull. And the bull, when head on collusion with the rock, hit the rock with itself, boom, and then fell and died. That morning when she woke up, the neighbor that took her to church was dead. <laughs> Deliverance from the molestation of enemies. That's what salvation it is. No, the enemy has the right to molest you. They have tried it against us time and again. It doesn't work. 
This is what salvation is. It is part of the benefits. It's part of the engraving salvation. They can't be troubling you and they say, you, and you say, you are saying, no, 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 no. No. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Deliverance from molestation of enemies. Deliverance. They tried it over here in this mission field. They were dealt with. They tried it in a previous mission field. They were dealt with. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And now one is trying to try now. And I've already said they're opening fire. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you try somebody that is, that is close to me, I, I open fire on you too. Because it's part of salvation. I am saved. And so those around me must also enjoy the benefits of my salvation. Praise God forevermore. In an ethical sense, that which concludes the soul safety or salvation. Are we together? So that which concludes your safety of your the salvation of your soul, your mind is also saved. Are you get what I'm saying? You can't have depression. Amen. You can't have mental breakdown. Amen. No. When people are breaking down mentally as a as a as a as an enlightened one of the law, you are not permitted to break down mentally. Amen. When people are getting depressed, you are not permitted to be depressed. This is what salvation entails. When people are sad, you are, you are not permitted to be sad. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So it also means, as the present possession of all true Christians, our present possession. Salvation is our present possession. What we have in Christ now. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen to Jesus. Now, it, it, it also talks about the future redemption from all the earthly eaves. Are we together? Um, that which we enjoy after the visible return of Christ. That's later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? But now we're looking at so that salvation is both now and what? Future. So when we tell people we are saved and we will be saved, this is what it means. It's both now and it is what? Future. Now we are dealing with deliverance, preservation, safety, deliverance from uh, enemy molestation, um, um, and the so safety of our souls, amen to Jesus, um, and then the possession of all true Christians. Now we're talking about now, but we're talking about the future. We're talking about the sum of benefits and blessings which the Christians redeemed from the earthly is we enjoy after the visible return of Christ from heaven. Are we together? Yes. In the consummate and eternal kingdom of God. The blessings we enjoy in the consummate and eternal kingdom. So when we tell you that blessing is beyond materialism, we are blessed now. We will be blessed after the return of Christ. Amen. That's why blessing is not time limited. Blessing is eternal. Blessing is not material, it's eternal. The Bible calls it the blessed union. The blessed union, the blessed union. See, if you understand what the blessing is, it's going to go shadowbush. We'll begin to think different. Are we together? So, the expectation of salvation is salvation which God gives to all who obey his call and accept his invitation of salvation. So, salvation is the hope of our calling in God. It's the hope of our calling. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. See, before you get born again, you are expectant for salvation. That's why, you see, when you, you are going to hit that call, it's an expectation for salvation that is calling you. That's why if it is not Christ, if it's not the gospel of Christ that is preached, then there is a problem. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because that expectation, Bible said the expectation of the righteous should not be cautioned. If it's not the gospel of Christ that is preached, your expectation will be cautioned. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why they come and they say, they told me a breakthrough, they told me husband, they told me wife, they told me job, and I've not seen the husband and wife and job and breakthrough, and you see, it's like this thing they are saying is not true. Why? Because they gave you a false expectation. The expectation we are to give you is Christ. That's the expectation. Eternal life, everlasting life, and salvation. That's the expectation. And when that is your expectation for coming to Christ, it can never be cut off. In that expectation, there will be nothing like the needs. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, In that expectation, oh, you see that before the need comes, the Lord has met it. In that expectation, there will be supernatural steady supplies. In that expectation, enemies, en enemies molestation are destroyed. Deliverance is assured. Preservation is assured. Safety is assured. And your soul is safe and intact. If when well, we previous mission street, what we went through at the point in time, you know, 
Somebody told my wife, say, I don't know how you are able to manage this thing, but God has been helping me. They sought to roll us to make us lose our mind. The pressure is what we cannot explain. You know, as some, people, some people are not going to pressure. They sought to make us lose our mind. But you know what? Because of salvation, our mind remained intact. I remember we pray for hours. I remember we we'll wake up at 5 a.m. and I'll pray. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, we have learned how to pray. We are still praying. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Because this is what salvation does to us. When the devil thought to you know, at the end of the day, the enemy was the one who lost his mind. I was so glad to see him pacing up and down. He lost his mind. He could not keep his calm again. You know what? After they threw all the arrows, they threw at us, they lost their mind. Yes. They lost their mind. I saw another one here again too. After the man did all he did, all he did, all he did. Later he was shouting, I cannot sleep. <laughs> he lost his mind. He could not sleep. Why? Because I'm saved. My mind is saved. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's it, my brother, my sister. You can't lose your cool. You can't lose your mind. The devil is the one who will run mad. He's going to lose his mind. Praise Amen. God forevermore. The, see, that the devil will lose his mind on your matter. Amen. The devil will lose his mind on your matter. Amen. All the gang up of hell against you, they will lose their mind on, their, on your matter. Amen. They wonder why you are so cool and so refreshed. Yes, they are losing their calm. Amen. They are losing their cool. Amen. They are getting, they are, they are losing weight. Amen. But you are gaining. I remember in the previous mission field, when we were going through what we were going through, one, one, a, 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 a gentleman told me once, he said, You are putting no weight too. <laughs> you are putting on weight. Praise God. Even what we are going through here, we are still putting on weight because the devil is the one to lose weight. I can't lose weight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. This expectation is not only good, it is also joyful. <laughs> and it creates confidence in the saints because this salvation is eternal. Hallelujah. Hey, is eternal. We are not talking about a temporary salvation. We're talking about an eternal salvation. That's why it creates joy in, the, in us. You know, when we used to sing those days, What is the hope you have, brother? The kingdom of God is the hope I have. The kingdom of... You see, that song, we used to sing it with, no drums, no keyboard, that, but we clap our hands and sing it with all joy. I don't know why we don't have those songs again now. We clap our hands. Got, that was the salvation we're talking about. But today when you ask him, what is the hope you have brother, the new car, the new house? That is all the hope we are now having. The wife, the, the travel abroad is the hope. We have missed the message. And that's why we are still not fulfilled. My brother, what is the hope of a calling? It is not the travel abroad. It's not the new car. You see, some of the time when I sit and I watch testimonies in churches nowadays, I just, I just, I'm not against it. Don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not against it. But you see, I don't see testimonies of salvation. They, uh, if you are, if you know you, are, you want to give your life to Christ, we don't want to call after the whole service. But you see, testimony time, we don't hear people come and say, I was once in darkness. And now the Lord saved me. When we do altar call, the people that come out, it's not a testimony. Yeah. But what is testimony is that those that um, God bless with car. Those that God bless with house. Those that God gave children. That's what we now call testimony. So the real testimony, we have shifted it away. Or are now taking brass instead of gold. That's why it looks like we don't know the hope of our calling. Again. Send us to politics, we mess up. Send us to business, we flop. Why? When we don't know the hope of our calling. Amen. So this expectation is joyful. Though. Salvation is eternal because Jesus obtained an eternal salvation, not a temporary one. Second Timothy 2 verse 10 says, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The salvation is in Christ Jesus. Are we together? And it's with eternal glory. Amen to Jesus. Hebrews 5 verse 9 says, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Of what? Eternal salvation. This salvation, is that is the hope of our marshal. That is the hope of our calling. That is, salvation is not time limited. If this salvation is to be time limited, how would I have been in trouble? 
the way the devil is, is making is making a mess now would have been in trouble. But our joy is that this salvation is eternal. You see, even when the devil is locked in the millennial, he will be enjoying the salvation. And then when he's finally cast into the bottomless pit, never to come out again, they will be enjoying the salvation. <laughs> you see, that's why the devil is mad at you and I. Why? Well, because you know that what we have is eternal. I know we are enjoying it in time. I will enjoy it after time. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Now, how did Jesus obtain eternal salvation for the saints? Simple. With his own blood. Hebrews 9 verse 12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and, and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal. Eternal. This is not time limited redemption. Is eternal. And then Hebrews 13 verse 12 says, Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gates. Amen to Jesus. Amen. And then in Revelation 1 verse 5 says, and from, and from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. With his own blood, he obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal salvation. This is why the good, joyful, and confident expectation of eternal salvation. That's why it is a good and joyful word, confidence. Are we together? Yeah. When we obey God, this hope is now a good, joyful, and confident hope. My brother, what is your joy? Our joy is salvation. What is our joy? Our joy is salvation. What is the hope of our coming? We are already enjoying eternal life, everlasting life, everlasting life that comes as a result of salvation is the hope of our calling in Christ. I believe somebody has been blessed. If you don't know Jesus, my brother, you cannot get this. I want to encourage you to make this decision now. You want to make Jesus a Lord and personal Savior, come and say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you died and resurrected for me. Calvary Street shed your blood to take away my sins over 2,000 years ago. Jesus, I believe in my heart and I confess in my mouth that you died, that you, 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 you died for me. Because you chose me, I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, thank you for everyone who has received you. Thank you, Lord, for receiving them into the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to pray for everyone who is sick. Now, one who cause sickness and disease, just put your hands in that part where you need God to heal you then let's use our, put our feet together and cause sickness and diseases. In the name of Jesus, we cause every pain. Yes, Lord. Every pain. Yes, Lord. Every disease. Amen. Every discomfort. Amen. We send for the healing balm of Jesus into human bodies. Amen. And on every implantation of the devil in both human bodies, we, we cause it and command it. Get out! Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. we decree healings. Yes, Lord. Healings in the thigh. Amen. Healings in the waist, Amen. healings in the back, Amen. the ribs, Amen. the stomach, Amen. wherever pains are, wherever Amen. sickness is up, we command healings Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. We cast out the spirit of infirmity. Amen. We cast infirmities to the root. We decree every pain occupying the pain against his wish. Yes, Lord. Now get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every strange object implanted in any human body. In the name of Jesus, come out! In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every creature in any human body. In the name of Jesus, come out! In Jesus' name. Amen. Every movement. Yes, in the name of Jesus, stop and get out! In the name of Jesus. Amen. We command total vibrations in the name of Jesus. Amen. For everyone who has received Jesus as a Lord and personal Savior, we command the full load of salvation manifesting you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We pray for breakthroughs and decrease supernatural turnarounds and miracles. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our prayer will pray, Lord, make me conscious of the hope of my God. Yes, Lord. Lord, help me to remain conscious of the hope of the calling. 
Of the hope of my calling in you. Zimbra Potere Begin. Help me to ever remain conscious of the hope of my calling in you. That's so Kambala Badu Shebere Beregadesh. Rom Pogodolo Bogodo Shebe de Lebedesh. Rom Brikete Lebedesh. Zasan Zosa. Maka Kadua Katama Badon de Lebedesh. Kebebeza. Yembreketo. La suka rakata rebeke tuske beleke teta ingre teke tingre ke televesha zombe ke televedesha zombe ke tu sakanda na basua talavash rombo bodolo bodus rebeke televedes ke betesa ronzi ka ronzi ke le soto ike le ke ske bedele bedele alwa sata rombe ke televesha zombe ke televedesha zenka ingude kenki le betosa manta la ta ta la ba in ta ra ba ba la ta ta ra ba ba sha ra fa help me to be ever conscious lord of the whole of my calling in you thank you lord jesus in the name of jesus lord we thank you for your word it has come with power lord we ask that you help us to ever remain conscious of the hope of our calling in you of everlasting life of salvation amen thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I believe you were blessed. Yes. Thank you for joining this long with us. We trust God to meet with you again online next month on our program for next month. Until then, keep serving the Lord's Christ. Keep listening to the teachings on Grave Life Coming. God bless you. Bless you. Thanks for listening to this teaching. We believe you were blessed listening to this prophetic and life-changing teaching episode. We would like to receive your praise report of your encounter with the Lord through the ministry of Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. To send in your praise report or make a request, kindly send us an email via chimdiohahunaministry at gmail.com. If you need more information about the ministry and would like to give a love offering today, you can visit our website via www.chimdiohahunaministry.org. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord. Wow. Beloved, thanks for listening to Grace Life Komi Podcasts. We believe that you've been blessed via this episode. We request that you also remain connected to us via our other social media handles on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and YouTube. We are Grace Life Komi on all these platforms. Also, for more information about the ministry of Pastor Chimdi and Funke Oahuna, kindly visit chimdioahunaministry.org. You can also send us your requests and testimonies via email today through chimdioahuna ministry at gmail.com. We are dedicated to feeding your spirit man with spiritual meals that we edify, equip, and engender your growth in the knowledge of God. Remain connected to Grace Life Komi. God bless you. Jesus is Lord.